Hi, I'm Adam Spencer, founder of the Day One Network, which is bringing the history of the Australian startup ecosystem to you. I believe in founders. It's why I do everything I do at Day One and our media company, W2D1 Media. And that's why the Day One Network exists to create helpful content for founders. We've got some great shows in development, but a large part of what we do couldn't be done without support from our partners and sponsors. And I couldn't be happier than to be working with NTP, who get community better than any other technology recruitment company out there. A Newcastle company like mine, NTP, are invested in seeing the growth of the local tech community in Newcastle, Sydney, and more broadly, Australia. So thank you, NTP, for helping us bring helpful content to founders and the startup community in Australia. Back to the interview. Hi, I'm Adam Spencer, founder of the Day One Network, which is bringing the history of the Australian startup ecosystem to you. I believe in founders. It's why I do everything I do at Day One and our media company, W2D1 Media. And that's why the Day One Network exists to create helpful content for founders. We've got some great shows in development, but a large part of what we do couldn't be done without support from our partners and sponsors. And I couldn't be happier than to be working with NTP, who get community better than any other technology recruitment company out there. A Newcastle company like mine, NTP, are invested in seeing the growth of the local tech community in Newcastle, Sydney, and more broadly, Australia. So thank you, NTP, for helping us bring helpful content to founders and the startup community in Australia. Back to the interview. Hi, I'm Adam Spencer and welcome to Day One, the podcast that spotlights Australian startups, founders, and the organizations that empower Australian entrepreneurship. We go back to the beginning to tell the story of Australia's most inspiring founders and how they built their companies. You're listening to a special interview series as part of a documentary W2D1 is producing about the history of the Australian startup ecosystem. On the episode today, we have... Hello, I'm Kate Jones. I'm the former Minister for Innovation in Queensland. I currently work for tech entrepreneur Bevan Slattery, um, particularly on his Hyper One project. Bevan has invested heavily in building infrastructure in relation to building the internet. So um, companies like um, Megaport, CloudScene, and I'm also an executive director with the Australian Tech Council. When would you say you first got involved in what we call the startup ecosystem or the innovation ecosystem in Australia? Well, interestingly, I um, worked in the BD government. We created the Smart State Agenda here in Queensland, you know, almost 20 years ago, well, over 20 years ago now. So in that regard, I kind of had my eyes open to the importance of innovation. But as you know, um, Adam, 20 years ago, people weren't sort of talking about startups and entrepreneurship. It was more about, you know, translation of research into um, commercialising ideas and business. Um, From my perspective, when I first got involved in the um, innovation ecosystem or the startup ecosystem as we know it today in Australia was in 2015 when um, our government, the Palaszczuk government, got elected here in Queensland and we had gone to that election with a very clear program and funding for Advanced Queensland that was very much focused on trying to support Queensland entrepreneurs to create startup businesses um, here in, in our state so they weren't having to move overseas or interstate to get support or to grow their startup. So what year would it be that you, you know, saw the startup ecosystem starting to kind of form and grow in Queensland? What were some of the things that were visible to you? Yeah, look, well, from my perspective, it really was from that 2015 time onwards, so six years ago now, and at the time I was actually the education minister. So what I was seeing was our investment through Advanced Queensland was seeing new places and spaces set up across Queensland where we were trying to create opportunities for young Queenslanders predominantly at the time to kind of see entrepreneurship and starting their own business or their own startup as an option for them post-schooling or even during schooling. So for me as a minister, what I focused on in that first term as the education minister was working with the Catholic schooling system, private schooling and state schooling to see how we could embed that into our curriculum. So 
This was, you know, introducing more ideas of entrepreneurship into our business curriculum and also introducing coding and robotics in the, the Queensland curriculum and fast tracking that into from prep for, so from a very little with children, so four to five, to start thinking with that mindset into our curriculum. And then in 2017, I became, well, I elected and I asked the Premier to if I could be the Innovation Minister because to me, I could see that there was such a huge pipeline of job opportunities if we create the right settings to support startups to grow and to thrive here in our state. Aside from that, um, was, is there anything else? Like, why were you so interested in taking on that innovation portfolio? Like, what, what, where do you see the future of innovation for Australia? Well, I think it is so critically important to productivity, but also to jobs growth. Um, you know, not only have I spent the last twenty years of my life working in politics, but I am also, you know, a, someone that's in a workforce where you could see the skill set that's required to create jobs. It was changing um, around me. And I remember having a, from a personal note, um, as a mother, but also as an employee, an employee, I remember thinking, look, there is going to be so much rapid growth in tech companies uh, and in Australia that if we don't create the skills and the pathway and the support and the programs for businesses to scale up, um, to choose to stay in Australia and not have to move interstate or overseas for financial support, then we were going to lose jobs from our country. So from my perspective, that was the main driver for me is that it was I see supporting our startup ecosystem as being absolutely critical to Australia's economic future and security. And it's interesting that now, um, four years later from that decision, I'm now on the the Tech Council of Australia because we have just released our roadmap for how we want to see, you know, the growth of one million tech jobs by 2025. And I don't think many Australians realise that, you know, right now, one in every 16 Australian works for a tech company and um, already we're injecting more than $167 billion into our economy. Um, that will only grow. You know, we expect that to, you know, almost grow by another third in the next um, 10 years. And when you look at the fastest growing companies in Australia right now, when you look at the size and scale of growth, many of them are tech companies and Australian startups that have started within the last five to six years. That's amazing. Uh, like, what were the steps leading up to deciding to form the Tech Council of Australia? Like, what, why is it so important that we need that body? Yeah, it's a really good point. I think now is the right time too because, you know, as you know, is a spin-off of Startup Australia. So um, Alex, who is the CEO there, has really sort of envisaged that now was the time for us as an industry to be taken seriously for the economic contribution we're making to Australia, now 12% of GDP, to be at the main table with, you know, the Prime Minister, a federal cabinet and the opposition. So it's a very apolitical body, but it's a body where we have some of the largest startup companies that are huge success stories now in Australia, including Atlassian, Afterpay, Canva, um, CultureAmp, different. And of course, the chair is Robin Denholm, who is the chair of Tesla globally and is based in Sydney. So, you know, we are talking about you know, major employers, not only in our country, but globally, that were Australian startups that have been able to scale up and are now, you know, global leaders in their tech. So the the genesis of the Tech Council of Australia was really about acknowledging that this ecosystem had matured enough in our country that we actually needed a body that was advocating at the highest levels for the right regulatory framework, the right policy settings, to create more opportunities for more startups and that pipeline of growth over the next 10 years to keep those jobs here in Australia and to create opportunities for the next generation. You can speak to this either from a Queensland point of view or a national view with your involvement in the Tech Council, but what are some of the immediate challenges that you uh, perceive? Well, I think the one that's a very familiar theme that we hear from not only members of the Tech Council of Australia, but also um, across the ecosystem is skills, ensuring that 
as I said earlier, that, you know, our education system here domestically provides our young people with the right skills. But also, I think we need to break down barriers for a lot of people that don't come from a tech background, but could be working at a startup that is scaling up. So I talk about, for example, you know, what we're seeing right now is from from our perspective, there's more than 60,000 jobs in tech companies that actually need skills. So that could be people that come from a different background. So HR, um, law, uh, media and comms, um, finance, those kind of traditional skill sets, but working for a startup that's scaling up or a tech business that has taken it to that next level of growth. So I think one of the things we hear, I hear regularly, and I see it experiencing it here working at a, um, in a, a company which, you know, at Capital B, which represents a number of startups that started here in Australia, that in, you know, having the right people with the right skills or people that have not worked traditionally in this environment to come in and give this sector a go. Jumping back to the Tech Council for a second, um, and, and talking about the roadmap, can you go into a bit more detail? Is there any more that you didn't cover in terms of like what you are hoping and what you guys are hoping the Tech Council will achieve? You know, in the next five, ten years. Yeah, look, we've got a, we really do, as I said, our, our immediate goal is to get to one million jobs by twenty twenty five. But the roadmap we have for that, it sort of covers sort of four themes. What we're really looking at from our members is one, continuing that pipeline of startups in Australia. So making sure we have the regulatory framework and funding and support from all levels of government to continue that pipeline of startup growth. Um, Secondly, uh, as I said, the skills piece, making sure that we governments understand the criticality of that skills um, shortage and look at ways that we can do that and traditional methods of importing skills and talent aren't going to meet the gap that we foresee will happen in the next sort of five to ten years. Finally, supporting businesses to scale up at the right time. You would have seen this in a number of discussions I'm sure you would have had as part of this podcast is that, you know, I think there are still there is still more work we can do to put that support around the different stages of growth of a startup as they go on that trajectory. And fourthly, how do we support businesses to kind of um, stay here in Australia and support them to grow their base and their jobs on our shores? So Australia is more um, self-sufficient in the, the tech that we're enabling across our economy. And finally, I should also say, um, how do we get non, non-traditional non tech sectors like agriculture, um, like mining, which are already going down the pathway of embracing some of the great technology that's coming out of Australian startups? How do we translate those businesses into those more traditional sectors more quickly? Because we think there's thousands, tens of thousands of jobs that we can immediately create by getting traditional ind- industries to embrace some of the amazing developments we're seeing in Australian startups. Drawing on your experience as Minister for Innovation and now your time at Capital B and Tech Council of Australia, what have you seen that maybe separates the Australian startup ecosystem more, if not separates, just like, what do we do really well? I think what we do do well, and I've certainly I was involved, I was very fortunate in my time as Innovation Minister here in Queensland, uh, Queensland was sort of chosen as one of, a, you know, a handful of locations globally to work with MIT, which is sort of seen as one of the leaders in supporting a startup ecosystem. And I think what we do do well compared to other countries even is really embracing trying to support startups in regional parts of our country, because that's going to be so critical for us moving forward. And some of the most innovative ideas I ever saw were from, you know, farmers that were, you know, just out of absolute necessity to support their business would come up with um, new innovations. So I think supporting innovation within regional centres, as opposed to seeing that brain drain to capital cities, is something that Australia does look to. Of course, we can do better, but it is just part of who we are. And also from talking to entrepreneurs that have, you know, worked both here and globally, I think sharing ideas and knowledge is something that we tend to do as Australians because we don't sort of have that, you know, I would I would categorise it as dog eat dog well, but I think there is that view that we are in this together and that collaboration is something that I think we can be proud of. And certainly where we can collaborate across, you know, partnerships with startups, big companies, government, 
and even academia, we know that when you bring those sort of four parties together, then that's how you create a really good and thriving innovation ecosystem. So where we can use, you know, levers to encourage that collaboration, I think is where we can also do better into the future as well. Do you have any unpopular opinions about the startup ecosystem? Just something that you firmly believe? Look, I think, I think it's hard for me because in some ways, you know, I haven't, you know, I haven't, I've definitely heard many times the trials and tribulations when you talk to a startup business about, you know, when they got knocked back a thousand times in the shoe leather they've had to wear and the tenaciousness you need to have and that self-belief to survive when you look at some of the data around, you know, the number of startups that actually sort of make it to the next level of um, funding and support is tough. So I think we... Where Australia has, I think, lacked in the past is sort of impact investment compared to other countries, but I think we're rapidly changing that environment. So, look, I think we've also had to, I know as a, as a minister here in Queensland, we sort of recognise the gap that there should be more women in this sector and we had programs around supporting entrepreneurship for women and also looking at the ecosystem and how we can actually create a safer and more inviting environment for you know young girls and women to think that they can be an entrepreneur and that they can start up as their own startup is also something I think we're going to have to continue to be activist about and not just think that it will happen naturally. I think sometimes you do actually have to take a quite an interventionist kind of role if you can to support that. I want to ask you the advice question, which I ask everybody this. What one piece of advice would you give a new founder? Yeah, I know it sounds so, I almost like cliche, but it's just like believe, like if believe, like and so when when you get knocked back, go back, think about why you, you got knocked back, think about what you can do differently, believe in the in the core of what your dream is and reshape it. Like I don't think, you know, I think believe that self, I mean, when I talk to people that have actually made it and every, you know, and I've spoken to lots of entrepreneurs in the last, you know, six years of my life, they always have that story about when they thought it was all going to come to nothing. That heart, you know, when they're, you know, their heart is in their throat and they think all, you know, and the ones that push through, whether it's Go One, you know, which is a great, you know, business, it's now global. Um, there's a training online platform. You know, when you talk to founders like that or Bevan Suttery, who I work for, they have these stories of when that moment happened at them and they went, but I know, I believe in my idea. I'm going to take stock. I'm going to real examine. It doesn't mean blindly continue down the pathway you were, but it does mean believe in that fundamental idea that you have that you think is globally significant and backing yourself and I think the other thing I would I'm only allowed one but the other thing we really focused (laughs) on here in Queensland was think global like if your business is not globally applicable then maybe rethink it like I think that's the other thing we've got to really look at where we can add to the global market because that's how you get the scale this last question and now it isn't really a question it's just I want to give you a few minutes keeping in mind that what we're trying to do here with this series is tell the truest, most holistic story of the Australian startup ecosystem. We want academics, founders, investors, policymakers, people from all corners of the community to hear this story. What would you want to tell them? I would be, I think I would be best to talk to other policy people in that context as opposed to telling a person that runs a, you know, that's starting a startup what to do. Uh, my advice would be where I'd want to make a contribution is to other policy makers that government is important. Like, totally understand that we, there is a school of thought about, you know, government needs to get out of the way, reduce regulation, reduce red tape blue tape, green tape to enable a business to thrive and that is important but I do think when you're trying to create an ecosystem and this is certainly experience in Queensland is that you know when you have investment in people, in skills, in places where it can fast track innovation then that actually does matter and it does make a difference and you know when we when we started our policy setting advanced Queensland in 2015 startup master had Queensland um, you know as a laggard state you know in, injecting a billion dollars clear pathways of support and dialogue with the sector from government also matters that's how you can reduce those barriers that's how you can 
ensure that any funding that the government commits actually goes to programs and support at the time that a startup needs it, not when government thinks that the startup needs it. So my advice would be that if we want to continue to see this jobs growth, and I think the potential is huge, if we want to see Australian businesses make it in global marketplaces, then government has a role. I don't think it should be hands-off. I think it should be hands-on, but it has to be hands-on in the right way. So I don't think it's a space where at this stage government should exit the field left. I think that government should absolutely be collaborating with the sector, listening to startups' journeys, listening to their advice and experience and using that to support more startups to thrive here in our country. I hope you enjoyed that interview. More interviews are on the way. Follow the podcast wherever you're listening right now. Stay tuned for more interviews with many, many more amazing people from the Australian startup ecosystem. Thanks for listening and see you next time. The Startup Retro is a new podcast from the team behind Overnight Success. A weekly show where we help you level up on the Australian startup ecosystem by giving you an insider's view on Aussie startups and venture capital. I'm Will Richards. And I'm Gemma Clancy. At OS, we curate the most important news and announcements across the ecosystem and explain a bit of useful context behind them. The Startup Retro podcast will follow a format familiar to our readers of the weekly newsletter, but offer an opportunity for much more discussion. So if you want to keep your finger on the pulse of all things happening, Aussie startups and venture capital, start your week by listening to the Startup Retro. New episodes every Monday, starting the 1st of July. The Startup Retro is brought to you by Day One, the podcast network for founders, operators, and investors.